Public-Private Partnerships, or PPPs, are a type of contractual agreement between government bodies and private sector companies. One of the first countries to introduce this type of contract was the UK in the early 90s, and they were known as the Public Finance Initiative, or PFI for short. Generally, it means private companies build, maintain and operate public services and infrastructure. However, often a great deal of the financial risk remains with a public body. It is common for this type of agreement to last for a long time, typically 25 to 30 years. This means that in the UK situation, with the rise of these sorts of contracts taking place in the mid to late 90s, many projects still have the agreement in place for five or more years. Once the agreement term is up, the idea is that the ownership would then pass over to the government on completion of all necessary payments. Now in theory, this type of agreement and procuring construction work in this way should have brought about a certain number of benefits, such as speeding up project delivery, the private sector's expertise should expedite the construction process. They allow for risk sharing. The private sector often takes on some of the financial and operational risks, reducing the burden on taxpayers. PPPs encourage innovation. Private sector partners bring fresh ideas and technologies to the table. They can promote life cycle management by ensuring the ongoing maintenance and upkeep of infrastructure long after completion. PPPs ought to provide quality assurance. Public-private collaborations often maintain higher standards and accountability. However, it is commonly thought that the PPP agreements in practice perhaps brought about more harm than good within the UK. With the benefit of hindsight, the financial impacts have perhaps on the most part been negative and in some cases significant to the government. This has been seen in a number of areas. The majority of the risk has ended up staying with the public body rather than the private company due to the private sector insisting on guarantees which ensured all risk was borne by the public. Some equity investors made windfall gains by demanding risk premiums. Tax avoidance became common with infrastructure funds being held in offshore tax havens. This stops the UK government being able to benefit from the corporation taxes from contractors' profits. PFI schemes led to hidden public debt through higher interest rates of borrowing from the private sector and extremely high consultancy costs. As well as the financial drawbacks, there has also been evidence of declining service standards and staffing levels to try and offset the financial losses due to rising debt payments, buildings and other facilities sitting empty after cuts to public services, and although not in use, the government must contractually keep up with the repayments for the contract term which can be decades after the facility closes. Despite the very debatable success of PPPs, this type of contractual agreement has led to some notable projects being completed in the UK, such as the M25 motorway, the Queen Elizabeth Hospital in Birmingham, the Jubilee line extension within the London Underground. Let us know in the comments if PPPs have been used in your country and whether they have been successful or not. Matrone a commercial hub to your business.